Last week, we took a look at AMD's 20.2.2 drivers. Those drivers seem to have actually fixed all of my issues with the game mode setting in AMD's Radeon software. This means that I actually had the ability to use game mode for the first time since the driver package that included it came out. And I was kind of shocked. You see, things look a little different, a little brighter, a little more HDR-ish, and definitely a lot more detailed. So I devised a plan. I recorded footage of both gameplay with and without the game mode enabled and showed a couple of other people to see if I was crazy or if there really was something to this. Hello and welcome. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at AMD's game mode and how it actually just works, when it works, and honestly, makes a very big difference that AMD themselves aren't even really talking about. Probably because using the feature would have caused you issues on older versions of the drivers. Now, game mode was kind of an off-limits feature for a little while because using it had severely unpredictable consequences when using AMD software. You see, it actually was related to several crashes and several types of crashes that you could have experienced when the drivers first came out. I actually posted a video explaining why you didn't want to use it. Now, on the 20.2.2 drivers, it does seem that these features work properly with Navi GPUs, but Polaris still seems to have some issues. So if you do have a Polaris card, do not enable game mode. But now that that little warning label is out of the way, let's talk about what game mode actually does. You see game mode, it looks like it does very little. It switches Radeon image sharpening and anti-lag on by default. And if that was all that was happening, I wouldn't really be talking about this. Radeon image sharpening actually bumps up the contrast on certain textures and sharpens things up. It actually kind of works really well with certain bitmaps and it actually looks really good on deterioration. But the feature, that we're talking about is the one you can't even access in the settings, and that is called Fidelity FX. Now, when I installed these drivers and we're testing them for the video we did last week, I noted that the rays that came off the sun in Fallen Order seemed a bit more intense now. And that is actually because they were. You see, Fidelity FX is AMD's proprietary lighting rendering engine thing that they can enable on just about any game. What's interesting about it is it actually kind of does a little bit of like a fake HDR effect. You see it actually heightens shadows, like makes them darker, and brightens brights. It also has a bit more bloom and a bit more rays coming off of it than uh, normal. This creates a very interesting effect across several different video games where you can almost instantly tell when you have the setting enabled. So with that, we were actually able to narrow down that turning on the game setting actually did turn on Fidelity FX, a feature that is not even listed on AMD's drivers. So with Radeon Image Sharpening and Fidelity FX enabled, we got to work. So we went ahead and went through a few different games to see how these settings actually affect them. And the footage, although it's going to be compressed by YouTube, you should be able to see some of the effects a little bit on this platform. So let's start with uh, our baseline test. Our baseline test was Shantae Half Genie Hero. This is a pixel art-ish game. It's uh, 2D art, very flat colors. And honestly, if the settings edited this in any way, it would actually be kind of bad because this game doesn't use a traditional lighting engine or really a traditional engine at all. Uh, it was an interesting way to check to make sure that the game settings did not affect it negatively. And I'm happy to say that on both cases, the game performed exactly as it should, looked exactly as it should, and there were pretty much no differences between the two. Our next game that we tinkered around with was PC Builder Simulator. Now this game is interesting because it's not really that hard to run. 
I used the Razer Workshop though because it has lots of neon in it and really this was, this is the easiest way to check to make sure that we weren't quite crazy. I did have Gamer Guts come in, take a look, and she immediately pointed out the clip that was using Fidelity FX and the Radeon image sharpening. It was clip number two over here, and she pointed out specifically that everything just kind of like popped a little bit more with the lights. We went ahead and tested a couple of retro games. We had Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, of all things. I have done City Escape hundreds of times. I have seen this cutscene hundreds of times, and I actually do prefer it with the Radeon Image Sharpening. The Radeon Image Sharpening did a kind of interesting job on this game. The textures are really low resolution, and if you really zoom in on these textures, they don't look great. But with Fidelity FX and Radeon Image Sharpening, you end up kind of making it look a bit more textured, which is good because it actually makes it look a little bit more modern. We tested Thrillville. Now this game, this is Thrillville 2, um, this one's a bit weird. It's a kind of like a guilty pleasure of mine, but as it goes, this game doesn't look all that great by today's standards, but running it with the Fidelity FX and Radeon Image Sharpening made it look a little bit better. It went from a game from the early 2000s to kind of like uh, maybe two or three years after it had actually come out. It was rather interesting to see this game kind of age up a little bit. We then decided to test Borderlands 1. Now I did show this one in the uh, testing the AMD settings to make sure that they worked video, and I had to test it a bit further. This game actually looks really interesting with Radeon image sharpening enabled. You see, the textures were actually updated already for the 4K update that they did recently. But playing it with Radeon image sharpening actually kind of helped make those textures pop and blend in a little bit more with the Borderlands look. I actually do recommend, if you have access to these settings, using them on this game. We did test Borderlands 3 as well. Unfortunately, the footage is virtually unusable for this game, uh, mainly because my OBS recording just did not record it at a high enough frame rate. I was using the benchmark test for it. Point is though, the game itself looks amazing, and with Fidelity FX, it also looks even more amazing. It contributes to a brighter glow on the objects. Uh, certain text actually ends up being more uh, legible. I have a Malawan gun equipped to my character right now, and I can read that it actually says Malawan scrolling across this like insanely bright, uh, kind of like screen-ish texture on the gun. It looks really good, and I honestly am impressed because the badass settings made this kind of happen on its own, but with the Radeon uh, settings specifically, which were kind of designed with this game in mind, and this game was designed with it in mind, it meant that essentially enabling them kind of upped it to the badass on Ultra, which is uh, pretty awesome in my book. We then tested a game that I've never played before, admittedly, Dauntless. Uh, it was free on Epic Game Store and it looked kind of up my alley. It looked like Monster Hunter and Fortnite mixed together. Don't really play Fortnite, but I do play Monster Hunter. and. That's a pretty accurate description of the game. It really is just Monster Hunter and Fortnite. Um, <laughs> that being said, the game's very cartoony and I really wanted to see what this did with that. And amazingly, Gamer Guts was able to pick it out immediately. She actually said that the fence had more texture on it, which it did. Uh, this game really isn't affected too heavily because Unreal Engine uses a lot of bloom and that art style uses a lot of bloom and shadows, but, it still had an effect, and even though I couldn't pick it out immediately, Gamer Guts did, and I knew what to look for, so that kind of uh, tells you how that turned out. Monster Hunter World is up next, and this one's a bit crazy. This one actually had a frame rate hit of 10 FPS between Fidelity FX and Fidelity FX Off. Um, essentially, this one looked better. It really did look better with the game settings, but the frame rate hit from it actually really sucked. And then finally, this, this is where I was like, okay, this is bloody awesome. 
This is Elder Scrolls Online. This is a game that has been panned for muddy textures and kind of subpar graphics. But look at this. Really look at this. The Fidelity FX and Radeon Image Sharpened version just looks so good. The little tweaks in the lighting and the little tweaks in the shadows and the detail make this game go from like, eh, to oh, in like, just, uh, I, I, I love Elder Scrolls Online and to see it look this nice is amazing. So, conclusion time. What? happen? When did AMD all of a sudden have like this magic secret sauce filter that they essentially couldn't use? Uh, it's weird because I remember when NVIDIA was like, hey, look at, oh, look at all this ray tracing. Look at all this awesome stuff that we can do with ray tracing. And then AMD's got this like super secret rendering sauce that they've got going over here that they didn't even really talk about. I had to look up Fidelity FX. I had no idea why it looked slightly different, why it even looked almost ray traced until I looked up that there was a reason I wasn't crazy. And then I still had to validate it that it was still as interesting as it was. Essentially, if you have a Navi GPU and you're stably running game mode, you've been secretly running an AMD setting that actually looks nicer than in standard. Uh, this is a weird world we live in now, isn't it? Either way, uh, this was just something I found interesting and I wanted to like actually share it with you guys because, well, honestly, I'm sure I'm not the only one who thought I was a little crazy that when I switched game mode on it, it just looked a little bit nicer. Either way, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, you can leave a like, comment, subscribe. I do content like this every week and I will see you guys again on Friday. Wolfie, out.